American Psycho is a book set in recent times, with themes like greed and macho behavior. It's a relentless and aggressive book written in 1991 by Brett Easton Ellis. The tone is set immediately by a quote from Dante's Inferno. Abandon all hope ye who enter here is written in graffiti on the side of a bank in blood-red paint. Bateman, a 27-year-old Wall Street investment banker, takes us along his daily life and shares his thoughts and ideas in doing so. In the morning he works out, has a meticulous skincare routine, and a carefully planned breakfast. He watches, the Patty Winters show, religiously, often calling his friends to laugh at the guests' strange habits or fears, and is always renting VHS tapes of his favorite films. Bateman and his Wall Street friends, which often includes Price, Craig McDermott, and David Van Patten, dine at the classiest and most expensive restaurants, wear only the best designer clothes, and pay attention to only the most physically attractive women, which they call hardbodies. You might think his life is pretty perfect, but there are downsides. He's unhappy in his relationship with his girlfriend Evelyn. He has a sex obsession, which makes him spend his evenings with a mix of lovers and prostitutes. He and his friends are also heavy drinkers and drug users, mostly cocaine for the men, while Courtney and the other women lean more towards antidepressants. Despite spending lots of time together, everything remains superficial, not going much beyond the clothes they wear, the places they are seen, and who they are with. They despise and mock anyone who doesn't have their wealth or taste. Even worse than all this, Patrick Bateman turns out to be a sociopathic serial killer. Bateman continually describes and fantasizes about committing violent acts. He describes acts of torture and murder in detail. Patrick Bateman kills people who he believes have no value. When he comes across a homeless man called Alan his dog, he first taunts the man by telling him to get a job. Al begins to cry, and Bateman suddenly stabs him in the eye. After gouging out one eye, Bateman tries to go for the second one. Al's dog's barking, and he kicks his legs, breaking them. He throws a quarter at the man and walks away. Later on in the story, he will see Al again and stab him to death on the street. He also tortures and murders a number of women. He hires prostitutes or picks up women, gets them drunk or high, is rough with them and then tortures them to death. He also kills Paul Owen, a fellow Wall Street investment banker who Bateman hates. Owen is the manager of the mysterious Fisher account, a bank account Bateman is obsessed with. Owen also makes the mistake of constantly confusing Bateman for another banker. One night, Bateman takes Owen out to dinner. He gets him drunk, has him pay the bill, and the two go back to Owen's apartment. There, Bateman murders Owen with an axe. He cleans up, packs a suitcase of Owen's things, and books a one-way ticket to London to throw off any suspicions of Owen's disappearance. Bateman gets rid of Owen's body, but keeps using his apartment for other murders and leaves a number of dead bodies behind there. One day, while at work, Bateman's secretary tells him that a detective has come to see him. The detective, Donald Kimball, tells Bateman he's been hired by Paul Owen's girlfriend to investigate his disappearance. He tells the detective that he had a date with a woman named Veronica that evening. When Bateman asks Kimball if Paul Owen has been spotted in London, he replies that two people did say they had seen him. Somewhat relieved, Bateman ends their conversation. His behavior grows more violent and careless every day. His drug use gets worse too, and he begins to add a number of different pills, which leads to frequent hallucinations. He tortures and murders in crueler ways too and even stops caring about only killing people who won't be missed. He murders his ex-girlfriend Bethany after getting her drunk at lunch. One night, walking through New York, Bateman sees a man playing the saxophone on the street corner. Bateman shoots the man, 
not noticing that a police car is close. The police starts chasing Bateman as he tries to get away with a taxi, whose driver he ends up killing too. Bateman gets to his office where he hides, as SWAT teams and helicopters surround the building. Hysterical, Bateman calls his lawyer, and confesses all his crimes, including the murder of Paul Owen. Bateman begins to hallucinate, staying in the office until the sun starts to rise. Days later, Bateman is somehow still free and living his normal life as he returns to Paul Owen's apartment, prepared for the smell of rotting corpses. Instead, he finds the apartment unlocked and spotless. A realtor is showing the apartment to potential buyers. She asks Bateman if he saw the ad in the Times. Bateman is shocked and quickly leaves. Several weeks later, at the opening of a new club, Bateman sees his lawyer across the room and decides to confront him about the voicemails he left the night of the police chase. His lawyer, Carnes, is amused, mistaking Bateman for someone else and teasing that the joke was unbelievable because Bateman could have never committed the acts described in the voicemail. Carnes goes on to say that Bateman couldn't have killed Paul Owen because he dined with Owen twice just the week before. The book ends much like it began, with Bateman out for drinks with his friend, discussing clothing and their work. You're left to wonder how Bateman's scattered life of drugs, sex, and violence will continue, as his eye catches a sign on the wall of a bar saying, This is not an exit. If you enjoyed this, Please like and subscribe.